Hello, my friends. Welcome to number of the day, revamped. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna go through not your traditional number of the day. I'll explain why the traditional one is like blah, and we'll talk about how we can revamp it. All right, so let's start off with why we should be revamping it. I'm sure it looks pretty familiar no matter what grade level you're in because they kind of have the standard format where you write down a number, right? So this number of the day is 64, and then you have specific prompts that you ask them. Now let's go over why I don't actually recommend these sheets. One is that most of the sheets are very cluttered. I know that sounds like a minor thing and it's kind of like the most minor thing in what I'm about to explain, but you have to think about visually things for students, right? Sometimes this is too overwhelming. The sensory is just on overload. It's just too much, too scattered. As clean as this may look to us, it's a lot for the kids. So it being cluttered is one piece, even though it's a minor piece. Now, the next reason is typically this is used as a worksheet, like busy work, masked as practice. Oh, I give it to kids for practice. I give it to kids for practice. We always say that. And I was guilty of this myself. And along the way, one of the things I noticed is that it's not even checked or gone over. But my thing is, why even bother giving it to them? If you could and had time to check it over, I'm sure you would. But the fact is, we don't. So we don't want to give students this busy work that's going to make more work for them and then make more work for us. And it may not have a deep value. It may not have a, a deep value in it, but we're giving them a lot of like what I always call clerical work right? If we don't want an overload in worksheets, we should not be providing an overload in worksheets. So something to keep in mind. Next up is that it's literally given too often. <laughs> so um, because it's number of the day, we tend to give it quite often. And it's super boring for students. At first, students sometimes like it. But then when they're doing the same prompts every day with a different number, it just becomes boring for them. So again, do you really want passive learners that are just doing it to do it, or do you want kids to kind of be engaged in it? Trust me, after 15 times of seeing the same crap with a different number, trust me when I say they are not engaged. Like there's not much thought put into it anymore. It's just mechanical, robotic for them. All right, the next one is it's not very interactive, right? There's no choice here. There's no student interactiveness because it's just like fill out the goddamn sheet and then we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so I wanna show you ways to alter this activity. So all of us are probably familiar with number webs. I was a little hesitant in putting this in there because it is kind of very basic. I'm gonna show you a different extension too. But I mean, at the end of the day, this is a number of the day. It's having students describe a number in a multiple forms and multiple ways, right? Which is exactly what we want students to do here, is that we want students to think of a number, compose it, decompose it, think of it as odd or even, 10 more, 10 less, one more, one less, things like that. That can happen on number webs as well. But the difference here is it gives the students a choice in what they come up with and when, what they create. It may be where a student does not think about odd or even, but thinks about what 10 more and 10 less would be. So that's what they would contribute to the number web. And of course, you can kind of create a group one where they're all sharing their ideas, like this one, and you're recording all the different ideas that the students came up with. So that's one way to address number of the day, but let me show you another one. So ways to think about a number, similar to number web, but not really. I'm gonna provide you with this template and it's very simple. You give the kids a number. So for example, I say 356 here. Obviously you can modify the numbers depending on the grade level. But all it is is you give students a number and then they can either work with a partner. You can definitely have them do it individually. I personally like giving this as an activity with partners or triads because kids are bouncing ideas off of each other and that's what you want. So basically, let's say partners get together, they get this, and they're coming up with different ways to describe 356. So some partners may say, all right, it's less than 500, it's more than 300, it's an even number, it's divisible by two, it ranges. And if you mix up the partners or the triads, that works even better. I'll provide you a template of this, about this number. So that's another way that you can deal with number of the day. 
Again, it's open. So students create what they know and you push them to extend their thinking. Now this next one is an example from Dr. Nikki Newton's book, Math Workshop in Action. So it is number of the day. You're providing students with, let's say the number 14. However, and this is what I love about it, it's not your traditional worksheet where you have the same boxes and prompts that you give to students every single day. Let's say that I give the students the number of the day that's 14. Now let's look over at the left-hand side. I'm gonna list these prompts. Show it with base 10 blocks, double it, half it, show with money, show it in expanded form, add 10 more, 100 more, you know, 10 less, 100 less, things like that. Um, well, you wouldn't do 100 less for 14. Uh, write the number name, is it even or odd? Those are prompts you can give. Now, let's look at the other upper elementary example. Still the number 14, but questions could be find the factors of the number, find the multiples of this number, show it using an array, show it with money, draw a rectangle with the, a perimeter of this. Notice these prompts are way different from each other. What I like about this is it doesn't have to remain the same every single day. Now this activity is not limited to whole numbers. You can do it with upper elementary three and four tenths or three fourths. So let's read through some of these examples for three and four tenths. Write it in word form, write it in fraction form, write two decimals that are less than this number add six tenths to it, subtract six tenths to it. You can round to the nearest whole number. Those are some examples of that. As far as fractions, you can add a fourth, subtract, multiply something to that fraction, decompose the fraction, and even show it on a number line. As you can see, fractions and decimals are related, but the prompts here are really different. Now, I would recommend checking out Dr. Nikki Newton's book because she provides a lot of different examples for this. But I'd like to put a twist on her activity. I'd like to give student choice. So instead of number of the day, it would really be what would you like to do with this number today? So let's say we have the number four. So this is a good kind of primary example. You write down some prompts, half it, how many more to make 10, name a shape with this many sides, is it odd or even? let students choose which ones they want to answer. Now, obviously the amount of choices that you give or the amount of prompts that you give will vary on the grade level. Just like you would change the number depending on the grade level, you would change how many prompts you give depending on the grade level. You do not want to overwhelm the kids, so do not give kindergartners 10 prompts. It's too much, keep it simple. The goal is that they have a couple that they can pick from. Now with number of the day, most teachers just give a new number the next day, but I say let's do something different with that. Maybe just change the prompts. So still keeping the same number, it's still number four, but instead of half it that I gave students the choice for yesterday, perhaps I'm gonna change it to double it. And instead of how many more to make 10, like I asked yesterday, Maybe I could ask how many more to make 12 today. And you can extend it to higher grade levels. Draw a shape with that many sides instead of naming a shape and draw a shape using this number as a perimeter. So here's one last example. It's the number 16, double it, primer composite, multiply it by four, round to the nearest 10. Look at all these standards I'm hitting. Add 12 tens to it, so it's unit form there. Um, add one fourth to it. And here's why I like the alternative to the traditional number of the day routine. It, it hits on different standards, but it hits on different standards and students have a choice in what they're solving or what they're using. And then don't change the number, just have them look at that same number in a different way, right? It doesn't deal with all this overwhelm. Yes, this is easy to print off and give to students, but it is a lot of overwhelm and some of it is a lot of nonsense. And you don't get an opportunity to ask different questions and prompts that you would want to ask. Maybe on these sheets that you print out, it doesn't say half the number, but you want students to half the number. Or maybe it doesn't say multiply it by a half, but you want students to learn how to multiply it by a half. This does not have flexibility. And you don't have to create it in this pretty kind of templated sheet. 
All you have to do is place the number, just write the number somewhere in your room and literally have like four statements, four sentences asking them to do something. You don't have to create this whole worksheet off of it. And all students would do on their end is write the number and then write the prompt that they chose to do. So maybe they would write the number 64 in their notebook and then underneath they're going to write half it because that was one of the choices. And then they would show how they halved it or multiply it by half. And then all they would do, 64 times a half and then solve it. So it gives you flexibility in what you ask them. It gives students choice in how they're solving and what they're picking to solve. It's basically a formative assessment for you because you get to see what students answer and kind of what they're staying away from. If they're staying away from it, there might be a reason. It gives you a chance to pull them together and talk about different things. It gives students a chance to explore a number uh, one number in many different ways. So I'm hoping you can see in this video the value of getting rid of this and moving on to this, right? What would students want to do with that number that day? All right, let me end on this one piece, creating this. Again, as always, just gather together with your grade level team, with a PLC team, with this membership and just brainstorm with one another. What are some banging prompts that I can use for this? What can I ask my kid? What's a great second grade question with this number? And what's a great fifth grade question with this number? Just collaborate and work together to create these. Now, I will be providing you with some prompts and some templates for this as well. All right, everyone, I cannot wait to see how you move from the traditional number of the day sheets to this revamped version.